welcome to Almost 30 Podcast. Hi, everybody. It's your favorite gals. It's your favorite spiritual seekers. <laughs> it's your favorite <laughs> spiritual seekers. Welcome to Almost 30 Podcast. You don't have to be 30 to listen. You don't need to be almost 30 to listen. We started it during our Saturn return. And here we are six years later with a community and business. We do courses and programs. We have a membership. Uh, we support podcasters. But really, you know, we're based around this podcast here where we explore and have deep conversations, insightful conversations, fun conversations with some of the best in the biz. Yes. And today is one of those very deep, <laughs> very high vibe, very... Um, yeah, when I say out there, I mean it with like the most love and enthusiasm because mm -hmm. it's like those are the conversations I feel like now are super positively activating for those of you out there that are like curious, that are knowing that there's more than just yes, what we're seeing. It's interesting because so our interview today is with Sandra Walter, who is iconic. Um, I was introduced to her by my Reiki teacher, April Fender, who's incredible. So she, like, over a year ago or something said, you know, Sandra's my girl. And I went to Sandra's page, and I was like, yo, Sandra is dialed. She's got these decrees, which are incredible. It's like an affirmation of sorts, but they just are more, like, they're more activating than any affirmation I've ever done. I'll do them in the morning. You can really feel it in your body. And her work is super out there, but it's so scientific and quantum mm -hmm. that it's like it doesn't feel woo woo you know what I mean I know exactly like you'll hear you some woo woo things and you're like oh sunning your butthole that feels woo woo yeah. <laughs> but this feels so true and so powerful so if you are not familiar with her she's an ascension guide and she's a way shower she's here to support us in our shift in consciousness um and she has amazing courses and programs on her site uh, she really helps to assist people through, you know, their evolution and ascension. She has really powerful meditations on Sunday called Sunday Unity Meditations that you can join as well. And um, she's one of those people that's not super like, you know, when we think about the spiritual leaders and teachers, I think her time is going to come very soon for her to be like one of the biggest names because she is so profound in her work and she's just like really dialed. Yeah, I often just like in interviewing people, I feel like there's a point at which things kind of catch up. Yes. And when like the the collective is ready mm -hmm. <laughs> en masse for her messages and her work, I feel like she will. But also, I don't know. It's it's almost like just her holding that frequency and anchoring that. It's like, yeah, that might be enough. I don't know. I know. <laughs> I know. And then she posted about our interview and was like, I just had a great conversation. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, we were when, fangirling. Dude, when people you respect see you, it's like, what? I know. It's literally the best. It's truly the, the best. The best feeling in the world. And to be honest, a lot of her work, I mentioned this on the podcast, doesn't fully integrate for me. It kind of takes a little bit. I don't know if you guys have ever read something that's super heady or super prescriptive or super, you know, out there in quotes. But it feels like that the first times I first time I heard it. But then the more I acclimate myself to her work, the more like the frequency mm -hmm. sets in, and the mm -hmm. more I'm able to understand it. So at first it was hard to understand, and now it's much easier. So if you're having a hard time with all the words and terminologies of ascension and of what we're talking about today, divine neutrality, Christ consciousness, unity, unity consciousness, that's okay. Yeah. You know, you're receiving the codes and transmissions just by listening. And I think it's that practice that's helped me to get out of my head a little bit because yep. you want to be in your head so so much you're like I want to understand this what is she saying or if you know anyone that you're listening to that you're having a hard time grasping a concept and it's really a good practice of you know simply opening your heart and just kind of having that be the receiving point rather than your mind yes um, and she talks a lot about um, that heart frequency and um, yeah I actually was just introduced to her work through you and so it's even in just, you know, engaging with what she's put out there recently, it does, it settles in and also bringing it into like a daily ritual. So this might be Sandra for you all, this might be someone else or um, another um, just breath of work, but 
I find that bringing it into very simple parts of my day, maybe mundane parts of my day, whether it's cooking or like going on a walk or maybe having it on when I'm doing like brushing my teeth, doing all the morning things, there's just a way in which it is able to land without feeling like, okay, I'm focusing on this one thing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when she told us about in this interview, she told us about living in the wilderness (laughs) in Mount Shasta. Yo, I'm like, I'm in. Whenever someone said, you know, people are like, I'm a teacher and I did this three day mastery course and now I'm certified. I'm like, sounds great. From 2012 to 2019. And when someone's like, I lived in the woods in a hammock for seven years, I'm like, I am very, very in. (laughs) Tell me more. Like that is like the debt. That is the shit you want from your teacher where they're like, yo, I'm talking about nature. I'm actually being in nature. I'm actually learning these things on my own. So we talk about that journey too of her living in the wilderness in Mount Shasta, which sounds so incredible and out there and amazing and her really heeding the call. I think that's an underlying theme of this conversation too is heeding the call of her intuition, of spirit, of creator and following um, that voice to where she is today. And I feel like it's really powerful because it didn't seem like there was a lot of friction between following that for her. It seemed like she heard it and then went and did it. And I know for some of us that can be a lot more challenging. You know, we can have resistance to heeding the call, but she did it and here she is. And she literally learned how to be in the wilderness, you know, through, you know, receiving the messages, information and downloads. Like this wasn't, you know, she brought a, a, a guide, like a guidebook on how to camp or do any of yes. these things. She was literally told as she went along. By Sasquatch. <laughs> she literally, I mean, that was fascinating to me. I, I on mean, Gaia, I got they chills. talk about it all the time. On Gaia, chills. they're like, oh, yeah, they are like South Sasquatches are inner earth beings. So it, there's also the concept or idea that there's an inner earth, which mm-hmm. has its own ecosystem, which has its own like beings and that they're inner earth beings and they go between dimensions and portals. Isn't that weird? It's the coolest thing. Dude, inner, inner, if you want to find out some shit, inner earth, Antarctica. I know. Arse wild, <laughs> is wild. Dude, it's wild. I went through like a whole phase of that too. And then all I could think about, I'm like, inner earth is real. <laughs> like Antarctica's like. Well, there's a lot of, um, aren't there a lot of like ships over Antarctica just. Yeah. Like where they've actually seen them, where there's like yes. footage over Antarctica very specifically. Oh, there's like a hole. They say that there's uh-huh. a hole that takes you into inner earth that is over Antarctica. Okay. And they said that that's why no one's allowed. There's a few things, I guess. That's why no one's allowed to go there. I think our troops, or actually I think it might be owned by like a government entity so that no one oh. is allowed to go. And then I don't know what the other things were. Like anyone that's traveled there hasn't come back. Or people that have said that they did go to inner earth. <laughs> they also, you know, also was really interested in in, in Antarctica. Hitler, Hitler mm. had a deep interest, oh, and wow. they, Hitler okay. had a council of psychics and mediums that he worked with. So he was often said to be counseling with psychics and mediums on on things. And then he had a great interest in Antarctica, and so it's been said that some like I don't know, so that he said in, saw inner earth there potentially, and then became interested in it. Fascinating. Okay, dude, I know you guys didn't. Think Welcome you, to we Almost Thirty. About Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. Um, <laughs> so this is for the spiritual seekers and those that are interested in talking about spirituality and consciousness, and um, it's a really beautiful conversation with Sandra. Uh, you can follow her on Instagram at Ascension underscore Guide underscore Sandra underscore Walter. Sandra Walter is her name. And then ascensionpath.com. You can find more information from Sandra. She came to us live from Sedona, Mm -hmm. which was beautiful and glorious. Um, And we're excited for you to dig into this one. We'd love if you shared this with a friend that you are having conversations about Ascension with or you feel this might resonate. That's how we've grown the show. And it's always kind to just send something, you know, when you think of a friend, whether it's a podcast or a meme, whatever it is. I think it's such a kind way to stay in connection with your community. Yes, and make sure you are subscribed to Almost 30. That way, all of our episodes will hit your podcast inbox anywhere you listen to podcasts. And to learn more about Almost 30, just go to almost30.com. We have incredible brands um, that are just deeply embedded in what we do because, as you know, if you've been with us for a while, we Uh, our master vetters. We are trying brands and experiences all the time and just making sure we bring you the best. So you can find 
loads of discount codes on our website, almost30.com slash partners. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm really <laughs> excited to talk to you. So my um, my Reiki teacher and someone that I worked with for quite some time when she lived in Los Angeles, her name is April Fender. I remember maybe a year or so ago, she's like, Sandra is my girl. She's like, Sandra mm. is my girl. <laughs> and I was like, oh, who is this? Because I really trust her and her opinion. And I found your page and I was like, whoa, it felt so next level. And it's honestly something that's still when I hear you speak and when I read the decrees and I read your information, it's almost like it's assimilating rather than it's being understood by my mind. And I'm really having to work with it. And I've noticed that too, when I've had situations where I'm up leveling or when I'm kind of working through um, information that almost doesn't make sense yet. I've had that situation where I'm hearing people speak, but it's not necessarily computing yet. And it's been really interesting to sort of see that journey with your work where I'm understanding it a little bit more and more. And I'm kind of seeing um, seeing the power of what you're saying more and more, even though I am was still as attracted to you as I was at the beginning. And just like this deep connection and truth. And um, you have this resonance within you that's so, so powerful. Uh, the mm -hmm. decrees are something that I do all the time. And I'm excited for our community to tap into them because you can feel them. Like I'll feel the the shivers in my body if I'm doing the decrees a lot because they're so incredibly powerful. But we're excited mm -hmm. to have you, Almost 30 community. I'm sure they're fans of yours. If they don't know you already, they will be. Um, and this is going to be such a beautiful conversation. I wanted to say, I wanted to ask first something about, um, that's kind of funky, but it's <laughs> about your voice and just how when you speak, there is no static. There's like such a beauty in the tone of your voice and the depth of your voice and the richness of your voice. Has that mm -hmm. been something that's evolved with the way that you've assimilated this information and the work that you've done? Or has your voice always been this like beautiful and rich and like, yeah, there's a beauty, there's a fabric to it. That's so nice. Yeah, I think that's part of my process too, because I notice the further along I am in my process, the more I allowed this higher self code crystal flow that comes through and it does, it changes your voice. All of a sudden, I remember people commenting in 2012 when everything was so crazy, how can you be so calm? Like I listen to you and I calm down and it's, it's all light coats. You know, when you learn how to allow that to come through, it is, it's vibrational. I mean, there's words, but the vibration is the code. That's the thing that is like awakening, reconnecting, resonating with DNA, getting the crystalline structures to light up. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful. And we've noticed that as well in our journey doing the podcast, you know, our voices have changed completely I and, do. and it's mm -hmm. something, you know, over time, I think for our community, it's like, that's a very subtle, subtle thing, but to notice your voice when it changes, when it goes higher pitch or lower pitch. But, um, I think it is really your frequency and the resonance. And when I hear you speak, it's like my heart is understanding, but my mind um, you know, is still kind of catching up to it because it's so powerful. I would love to know the origins of this work that you do now. So curious if you've always felt connected uh, to this multi-dimensional aspect of you or was there a moment or a period of time that really awakened this awareness? Well, like many of us, I had contact as a child. So you're having all these experiences and it's very lucid and flowy and bizarre and um, <laughs> uh, like some of the sisters and probably both of you, you know, I was in Catholic school, so you didn't talk about that, right? So you're going through all of that, keeping it to yourself, but it just kept presenting. And then as an artist, as a performer, it just kept like different things were happening to me when I was in creative flow. And then my big Shazam moment, 1999, literally January 1st, I suddenly went clairaudient and claircognizant and started receiving messages every day, every day. And I'm not the kind of person who doubts a lot. So I wasn't like, oh, I shouldn't say this. I shouldn't. Sh I started sharing them right away, right away. And it was just, that was the guidance. Just share this, just share this. But they kept talking, you know, my guides, my higher levels kept talking about the time when the shift in consciousness was going to just take over everyone's journey. 
So all this direction kept coming and the messages got longer and clearer. And then huge turning point, uh, 2001, started traveling a little bit. And then in uh, 2010, left my day job altogether, totally dedicated myself to this, and then ended up spending 2012 through 2019 um, mostly in the wilderness on Mount Shasta. So the call to Shasta and going there with no money, no resources, like nothing, just giving up everything, like such an important part of our journeys to be able to surrender everything and just follow the guidance. So went blindly into Shasta, not knowing what it was, how, how it was going to affect me. They weren't showing me what it was going to do. It was just go, right? And there in the woods by myself and in the Sierra Nevada wilderness, just learned how to connect, how to be a pure conduit, what this whole return to the Christ was about, what ascension was about, just every week unloading this on my blog. And then, of course, branching out, because I did come um, inside in the winter time because it's quite abusive <laughs> in the mountains in the winter. So I could last till like November and then I would have to come inside. And that's when I would teach and share and started doing classes, things Were you like actually, that. Did you live outside? Yeah. Wow. How, how, and yes. How so? Yes. How so? I didn't know how to camp when I got there. So I was like on the ground with like, and I had this like $30 tent eventually, you know, but I, and I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm like, wow, my back hurts. I'm freezing my spine every night. They're like, get a camping pad. I'm like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> but most of the time I was in a hammock, like, you know, Shasta is just, it's a cathedral, giant ancient trees, right? So you get these extender straps and you get this hammock and you, like hang yourself between those two trees and then you can see everything. There was light ships, there was Sasquatch, there were beings, there were light beings, there were, you know, just ships coming in and out of the ground. Like I can't even describe how much activity I was witness to during my tenure in Mount Shasta and it has changed. So I really hit it during like a, a prime moment for distortions to disappear and for this next thing to come on, which is deeply related to my service as a Stargate keeper or somebody who's able to interact with those. So learned everything during that seven years. And, and now I'm carrying that vibration, that frequency all the time, which is really quite beautiful. So now my service is, uh, and I really do believe in unity consciousness. So I feel having that experience myself, now I can share it with others as if we are one being, right? Having this, the similar experiences, but I can share everything that I learned in that experience. And a lot of people do, you know, a lot of people say that, oh, I wish I could just get away from everything throw everything away and just go to the woods and just really discover myself. Yes. I, I'd say it's a valuable part of anybody's journey, whether it's a weekend, a week, a month, seven years, but you learn so much about yourself because when you get in nature in that way, you, your fields get entrained to the natural rhythm. That is you, the natural spirit that is you. And so many valuable lessons present and a lot of clearing, and a lot of learning, and a lot of accessing different parts of myself or different beings that have always been with me. This was just blasting open the doors, right? The self-revelation phase of my journey, which I now share and attempt to uh, teach. Wow. So the, this is amazing. So being there, you know, you're in your hammock in Shasta, and I've heard so many beautiful things. I can't wait to go. I'm really looking forward to it. Was there ever a point where you were fearful or where you were, you know, because the, the, for me, growing up Catholic, I'm like, oh, there's the, you know, there's the demons, there's these like dark beings as well, in addition to the beautiful. 
And we know what it feels like in our body to feel when we're in contact with like the higher light beings. It's, you know, there's just no question. But you're seeing things that are also like this, the aliens, the Sasquatches, where for me, for my perception, it feels like I can't, sometimes I can't read the frequency. I'm like, what is going on? So what was your mm -hmm. experience when you're coming into contact with these things? You're seeing the ships. Were you learning about them for the first time? Or did you have an understanding through books and readings and things that helped you see what, or contextualize what you were seeing? Well, I was actually told, like, when I went clairaudient in 99, they were like, don't read anything, don't watch anything, oh. let this be a pure remembering and a pure activation. Mm. So I was trained w way before I got to Shasta about discernment with beings, with presence and everything. And just the, the more you get into um, kind of neutralizing your heart so you don't get afraid anymore, um, the, the more that you let in your big higher self, I am presence, Christ itself, whatever you want to call it. And then you stand in that light and just all, all of the stuff that wants to wear a mask or, you know, play around with you or whatever, just stands back. And then you go to Shasta, which is, you know, huge light and also, you know, huge polarities sometimes, you know, it's gotten better, but to, to stand in the presence of even some of those beings. And then, woof, you know, the, the big higher self starts stepping forth and doing things and beings are stepping down and everything. And you're like, wow, okay. You know, I really have to know and learn who I am and then walk around as that. And of course, with the first time experiences of very, you know, the bizarre, yeah. you know, like light ship type things or even like a group of sasquatch standing around my hammock doing this like initiation of me being in the woods you know i'm like on their territory and there's this big initiation going on and they're making all these crazy noises wild energies and you see them like they're appearing right they don't materialize for a lot of people wow and you know in some part of my mind even though i'm very present and enjoying the experience and honored there's still that part of your mind that's like Oh my God, is this is really happening? <laughs> <laughs> Try not to freak out, right? Play cool. So, yeah, yeah. And it's just, I desire those experiences though, because it is a choice, just like ascension. I desire experiences, expansion, challenge me, show me everything. I'm very curious about that, which is the reason why probably I was selected to go to Shasta to do what I was doing. It's like, oh, who's going to be able to throw themselves in the woods during this whole 2020, 2012 shift? And he, you know, I showed up. Wow. And a lot of it is showing up, you know, when you get the guidance, yeah. because it is about facing the fears and, and learning your true heart, you know, because the, the, everyone says, you know, fear is all illusion. And you really learn that. But being present with those challenges consistently, wow, that really just lights up your whole journey and your service and everything that you do. I heard that Sasquatches are they portal jumpers and that they come to Earth and they like um, take like plants and stuff. They like keep the wisdom and the information of Earth. It's almost like they are like they study Earth. So they keep all the plants and parts of all the animals to make sure that we have it like kept on record. <laughs> Yeah, like a little earth library, yes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> They're really like that. So I had one in particular that was like my guardian. So when he presented, I was I was shocked. You know, the first time I saw him, I was like, wow, there, there's a Sasquatch. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like that just happened. And he had been presenting in and out, and I have very strong third eye vision. So I was able to see him better when I closed my eyes. But then when he got comfortable with me and understood what I was doing and the first thing that he telepathically broadcasted to me, just kind of like bowed a little bit and he was like anything for gatekeeper and like disappeared. Wow. And I was like, Oh my gosh, he's been watching everything that I've been doing. And then once we got to know each other, he was more comfortable. I was more comfortable. And then he started revealing and to watch Oh, get goosebumps just thinking about it. But to watch a Sasquatch travel through the woods is just phenomenal. I was like, how do you do that? Because you would just be a, a rushing blur. 
And then at every tree, he would like light up and linger a little bit whoop, to the next tree, light up and linger a bit. It's so he was using, using the trees as a network to travel. And I was like, oh my gosh, show me how you do that. He's like network, right? It's a network. It's a gateway. So it's, and it was beautiful. He tried to teach me. I leaned against the tree and he's guiding me, you know, he's like, flow just let it open up and everything got very watery mm. and wiggly like the whole reality just like the illusion just breaks down wow. right tapping into that but i was not capable of like do it they don't bilocate they'd like relocate their energy wherever they choose to be so he was using the trees because it's easy right but uh, that ability to appear and disappear, of course, that's ascended master stuff too, right? The ability to look at, you know, Babaji just in and out, right? Like total command of the form, mm -hmm. just beautiful, just really beautiful. So it was lovely to see examples of that. Mm. Yeah. What did your, you mentioned trainings during this time. What did other trainings look like while you were in Shasta with different beings and was there any training in particular that you felt has has just stayed with you as the most powerful or the most impactful for the work that you do now? Yeah, most of it, the most powerful things were really the simplest. Mm. So when you're dealing with multidimensional beings, especially galactics, they can be, you know, they're they're in a different frequency a different consciousness altogether so they're working with pure unity consciousness so a lot of the material that i convey i'm trying to you know kind of uh clarify it in more human language to kind of land like what is what are, what are you trying to tell me here because the big thing is you know if anybody's had experience with channeling it's a whole lot of information at once, and then you kind of have to unpack it. So that was probably one of the first most valuable trainings was how to unpack downloads, if you want to call them that, when you receive a lot of information at once and you can feel it, but then you're like, what does that mean? How do I apply it? What's happening in this moment? So it really teaches you presence, the woods, mm -hmm. teach, you, teach you incredible presence, just being absolutely in the flow with everything. Uh, and I feel it's important too for women actually to have that journey of being alone in the woods, maybe making it, a, I would love to start a women in the woods where you don't camp together. You have that, you know, that isolation, but then you have like maybe a safe space to come back and kind of unload what's going on. You know, maybe it would make people a little bit more woods friendly about uh, taking that adventure, which is definitely huge for um, for your consciousness. But the other thing was there were a lot of masters that came in. Like I, I had never been aware of my journeys with Krishna at all. And all of a sudden Krishna appears in the middle of my sacred circle in the woods and he's talking to this child, right? So I kind of turn the vision. I'm like, who is he talking to? And it's a seven-year-old version of myself. And like, you remember the clothes and stuff that you used to wear? Like I'm in the bathrobe and I was like, oh, I forgot. Like I could feel the texture of that bathrobe, that stiff, crazy polyester bathrobe that I used to, you know, and you could feel like, oh, like they have been with me through this whole thing. And then it's, okay, so now we're dealing with Christed realms. Let's open up what is going to be, and I always ask, what is most beneficial and in the highest interests of ascension itself? Show me everything about this process. So tools like divine neutrality start coming in as a way to learn unconditional love and move into unity consciousness, which is a radically different vibration than anything we have grokked so far, right? So everything that we've experienced as far as unity consciousness um, is like a level. So I was like, how do we get to the next level? Because when I experience unity consciousness at the mastery level or at the galactic level, it's so far behind, beyond our labels and our terms and our comprehension. I was like, okay, so how do we kind of stair step to that level where we do fully not just embody 
the higher self, but kind of become that presence. So tools like divine neutrality started to uh, started to teach me, and therefore I can share it, how to depolarize from the things that sway us in one direction or the other. Very important during this revelation phase where everything is getting revealed and then people get pulled into different narratives or the narrative flips. And then how do you deal with it? And, oh, I thought one thing and now it's another. Like the illusion just gets completely pulled apart during the revelation phase. So this was a way for us to kind of pull back to the cosmic perspective and not get immediately into judgment or yes or no. It was like, there's a neutral place there where the Christ consciousness, unity consciousness lives that we can maintain more easily if we start to entrain our fields, not to go in one way or the other, the middle path, like, you know, to the nth degree. We hope you're enjoying this conversation. We're going to take a few moments to share brands with you that we love and who support this show. My morning routine is very, very special to me. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. One of my favorite parts of my morning routine is making my morning beverage. And I'm excited to introduce you to a brand that Krista and I have just loved and completely been blown away by, Rasa. So Rasa is an adaptogenic coffee alternative with an incredible selection of blends. So if you are someone who's trying to get off coffee, maybe noticing that it's giving you more anxiety and not making you feel great, Rasa is an incredible alternative. So instead of caffeine, Rasa energizes from adaptogenic herbs and mushrooms. Adaptogens, as you may know, are most effective when consumed regularly and consistently. It's kind of like compounding over time. Uh, So if you're getting your daily dose of adaptogens, you're doing good. You're going to have a beautiful morning routine, truly set the tone for your day. I want to share with you some of my favorites from Rasa. I love the cacao blend. Um, It has a chocolatey taste. It's very grounding. It's kind of like a healthy hot chocolate. But for me, this is a beautiful alternative to my coffee. Midday, I love to incorporate this super happy sunshine. Um, It's their joy blend that helps boost your mood. It almost has this like lemony taste and just basically tastes like a really good day. (laughs) And then sometimes before bed, I have Rasa Calm. This is really just amazing to chill out later in the day, help you wind down Honestly, I've been kind of using it as my substitute for a glass of wine. And it's just so, so good. The ingredients are organic, sustainably sourced, and fair trade or direct trade. Rasa is fanatical. You can even, you can feel it. You can taste it. It's in the energy of these blends. They are fanatical about responsible sourcing and creating positive impact through their through supporting their growers and farmers. I'm really excited for you to try Rasa. You can go to their website and take a brief quiz and they will recommend the perfect blend just for you. And right now to get you started, you get 20% off your first purchase. Go to wearerasa.com. That's wearrasa.com and use our special promo code almost30. That's promo code almost30 for 20% off at wearerasa.com. That's R-A-S-A. Supplements in chocolate genius. <laughs> Need I say more? This is a dream. (laughs) So for those of you that love chocolate, allow me to introduce you to FX Chocolate. They take powerful nutraceuticals like reishi, ashwagandha, CBD, and phytonutrients and deliver them to you in a delicious square of sugar-free, keto-friendly dark chocolate. Yes, sugar-free, keto-friendly, dark chocolate. It's delicious and a super effective way to take your vitamins and supplements. And the lipids, the healthy fats in chocolate, help your cells more readily absorb the nutrients you ingest. So it just makes it a really great delivery system. They have different formulations. Uh, As you know, I'm sure Krista is obsessed with FX as well. I know she is really on her Defend formula right now. I really love the focus. So for example, the Defend formula has reishi mushrooms. So these are masters of immune support, energy and cellular protection. They are mushrooms and they use every part of the mushroom, which enables a max potency for a slow, steady, and balanced energy rain. So 
highly recommend Defend. And then I am loving the Focus formula. So this has ashwagandha, which is an adaptogen, and it has Nuganda. It's a next generation ashwagandha extract that works with the mind as a cognitive nootropic to help you focus. So cool. And again, it's in dark chocolate. Super, super yummy. FX Chocolate is offering our listeners a super generous 20% off with code ALMOST30 when you go to fxchocolate.com. fxchocolate.com. Use the code ALMOST30 to get 20% off. You know, I didn't really understand the concept of unity consciousness until, and like, polarization even until law of one and law of one is you know the raw materials my favorite all five books are my favorite spiritual text and it really helped me understand it and now believe in it and almost try to embody it but I do remember before when I was living in more of a duality space where I felt like it was spiritual bypassing to sort of be um in that unity consciousness what is it that you tell to people that you know are in that belief that being in divine neutrality or being in unity consciousness is actually bypassing. There is so much work that comes before mm. that mastery step. You know, a lot of people look at mastery teachings and they're like, oh, well, you're avoiding everything that came before, not realizing that the people that are engaging with this, these next levels have done all that work. Right. And we honor that. And that's the beautiful part of divine neutrality, too. You can go, OK, I honor your journey. It gives people the opportunity to honor your own journey when you're honoring theirs. Right. So immediately, anybody who's at that stage in their journey. OK, I understand. I completely understand your perspective that it looks like one thing, but you have to realize you're you're only asking about this one thing. You're not asking about all the basic foundational steps that it takes to get clear about your journey, all the emotional clearing, all of that, you know, resolution of who you were before you start to step into who you truly are. So this, when we start talking about mastery practices, you know, if there's any bypassing at all, it's people who try to jump into the mastery steps before they've done the foundational work. So it is, you know, that's that invisible staircase. You don't see it until you take the step, right? That's what the ascension process is in the beginning. And then you kind of reach this, these different levels that, again, are so neutral and so honoring of where everybody is in their journey. It's, it, you can't be swayed. You know, it just doesn't bother you. So if people are even getting harassed by people who are judgmental and saying you're doing this you're not doing that it just doesn't matter you know it just doesn't matter it's like you're here to have an experience and that's the very first thing with the ascension process making the choice what do i want to experience in this incarnation maybe i want to get the most bang for my buck in this incarnation just really blow the doors off of my heart and really open up Take chances and trust that you can't get it wrong if you're following your heart, if you're following the pursuit of love, the pursuit of getting to know what is source, what am I doing here, <laughs> and what is source trying to experience through me, you know, so that's, the, it's all part of that expansion, and even getting into, like, a, a true crystalline light body transformation which is the phase that a lot of us are getting into because you, and again, you know, you don't just jump into commanding your body to go light body. There's all these like crystalline structures that need to activate in your body. And, and we've been building that for decades, you know, just in our process, but the, um, but now we're getting to witness it. So people that are a little further down the path, you start seeing, sparkles coming out through your skin like literally it looks like selenite powder all over your skin you're like oh my goodness like this is real right it's getting physicalized and then you build the crystalline structures and then the crystal of course is the the sender and receiver for those new energies and the new energies come in it's all so divinely timed for how this steps forth in the collective so the 
the kind of um, things that appear to be further down the path. It's really wonderful if you're new to the ascension process, not just awakening. You know, awakening is widespread right now. But if you're choosing to get into an ascension process, just take to heart that the the way showers that have come before you have not only paved a path, but because of that, and because of the time acceleration right now, your process won't take 30 years, 100 years, 10 years. You know, it can be very compressed now. It can happen very quickly because the energy is different and because unity consciousness itself creates a container for a, a rapid acceleration of every step of the ascension process. So don't look at it like, oh my gosh, I have to go through all of this uh, debris and releasing from the lower levels. It's more that we can step into um, right where everybody else is right now, right? Mm -hmm. Very accelerated. Mm -hmm. I think we're frozen a little bit. We'll yeah. It. Can you still hear okay. us? Yes. That's beautiful. Um, I want to talk about navigating the crystalline light body, what that is. Mm -hmm. And I've heard different things. Have we always had the crystalline light body or was it implanted or given to us in the last few decades? And I guess what are some tactical ways in which we can activate the light body? Because mm -hmm. um, this might be new information to people. <laughs> that sure. they have this? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, there's the crystalline light body, the intention of this being a planet upon which you could experience this kind of ascension. And the, the original intent, which is billions of years old, and then you get into millions with different civilizations. And then this current experience, like since 2012, of uh, a speeding up, of this transformation and it's like literally a biophotonic transformation in the body the body is completely capable of ascending and we've had masters that came before us that showed us the way and kept creating those templates again unity consciousness we're all one so whatever somebody does you know that that anchors that into the collective consciousness leaves it here you can pick it up and run with it right but the thing with 2012 is that it it started to we we started receiving very different frequencies and light flows and crystalline light flows and plasma that are all encoded to find those activated crystalline structures and take them do that biophotonic transformation a metamorphosis of the body and the body, of course, being a completely separate consciousness that's aware and fully animated by you, um, when you become more aware of the higher you, the bigger you, you know, it's all one, your whole multidimensional self. It's all operating simultaneously without time, without any constraints whatsoever. And when it becomes aware, all of a sudden it can start waking up the body vehicle to turn on these levels of crystal and light body. And we've always had light body because we were spirit inhabiting form. So there was, there's always been a light body, right? That's the only way you're gonna animate consciousness, shine through some chakras and create the animation of matter as, as a creator being, right? You're doing exactly what source does in that way. But now, through the, we've all, you know, it's been predicted for so long, the ascension, the ascension, the ascension, there's going to be this transformation, there's going to be this time when we're going to align and galactic frequencies are going to come in, it's going to transform the whole multiverse, and you get into universe and the galaxy planet, right? So a lot of people are very Gaia focused, very planetary, like, what am I doing with my body? And that's beautiful. But the infusion of like this multidimensional awareness right now is what creates that solar crystalline light body. So it's a different expression of human stepping away from human animal and going into divine human. 
right? So it's a different expression of human. And the human has always had those codes in your DNA, that divine human DNA. And not everybody has a whole lot of it. Some people have a lot of it. But over the course of our linear experience, more and more of that crystalline DNA starts getting amplified. And because we are a unified consciousness, you're doing all the work in the US and across on the other side of the world, people start to light up, right? Because we are one, the crystal grids, you know, all of that connection. So it's that crystal that can handle that higher frequency that connects light workers, star seeds, different points on Gaia, different stargates on Gaia, and all this energy comes in and it starts creating a brand new expression of the light body, which then transforms the physical. Does that make sense? Yes. What sort of, tra- like, what sort of transformations have you noticed with the, the physical? Like, how has it transformed your physical and what sort of experiences can people expect out that, as that's happening? Um, and this is like, you know, a three part question, which isn't normally my jam, but um, with this, what's something that our audience can do to help be more in that crystalline, like to ha- help activate more of that crystalline DNA? Yeah, well, um, firstly, I mean, besides the sparkling skin and just the general renewal uh, that happens with uh, crystalline structures coming on, the, f- the focus for me has always been on the consciousness because I'm, I'm not very attached to my body. So I'm not one of those people who's trying to use crystalline DNA to look like they're 30 when they're 50. You know, I'm just, I'm not into it, but I notice. <laughs> It was having a f- level and anyway? then go back where you're vain. <laughs> You've ascended this right. far and then all of a sudden you're vain again. <laughs> yeah, it's just, and it's not vanity. I mean, you know, but looking wonderful is, is lovely, right? It makes you feel good. However, the consciousness was the thing for me. The ability to be to become so clear of, uh, of a conduit with these other dimensional beings was amazing, right? That That was quite wonderful that kind of clarity, the clarity of uh, the intimacy with source, outstanding, absolutely outstanding. You know, that kind of, and that's something that I desired. I was, oh, I wanted that return, right? That return to um, a reunion with source where I got it, you know, and not the er earlier in the journey, you know, giant gates opening, all these masters appearing, welcome back, you know, kind of thing. Beautiful, lots of weeping with the reunion. However, the the intimacy with source is profound, right? That If that's the most profound thing I notice. Yes, I notice different colors, my galactic chakra system, that, that huge harmonic that happens where the chakras get completely transmuted into this giant pillar system that we call the ascension column that I've noticed. I I don't know, you know, visible what people just staring at a video would see anything. If anything, there's um, the feeling that comes off of my voice and my presence. I've noticed it. I've noticed miraculous things happen around me that I'm not attached to at all. I'm not trying to do anything, but walking around as that presence was the goal, right? So you start to notice, all right, it's transforming my consciousness, my awareness, my mind, my emotions. And if the physical changes, that's fine. It's not one of the goals of my ascension process. Um, Although I do always say, Let us show humanity what's possible with ascension. So who knows? That opens the door for a lot of that. But for me, the the main core practices were meditation, using divine decrees, like changing the thought patterns, changing the way the heart operates through divine neutrality and unconditional love, right? Just really getting into the flow of the true self, the sort, letting this crystalline star, stargate of the heart just open wide and let it take over, just completely trusting that, you know, because you start to feel it and then it opens and, and then you feel 
this completely different flow in your fields and in your days and linear time goes away. And it's, it's quite remarkable, but the, but the main practices, again, meditation decrees, applying all of our ascension practices consistently, really getting out in nature and surrendering, not trying to do something, but talking to Gaia, creating an intimate relationship with Gaia, with the sun, with my I am presence, with that bigger thing that I am, and keeping that in heart with every interaction and everything that happens in the external, just really having the internal so on that you can you start to feel your light body kind of pushing against the walls of the realities and changing them. So your whole field is now giving you a different experience, which is ascension in itself, right? It's a whole different experience, transforming your consciousness. And because you're transforming the consciousness and getting more light, more spirit into the form, more awareness, it does, it transforms the body as well. So it does become physicalized and everything in the etheric is becoming physicalized right now. That's the lowering of the veils, right? The veils go away and you start seeing more of what's going on. Nobody can hide anymore. (laughs) (laughs) And it's beautiful to witness that. But if anything, it's consistently, you know, hands on the heart, breathing into the heart, coming back to the heart consistently, especially when things want to kind of pull you in a certain direction, or you're revisiting a trigger, or you know anything that might come up, right? Because it's the pursuit of divine perfection, which sounds like one thing, but the actual definition is proper use of life force. Mm-hmm. And if you just start there with being aware of how you're qualifying the light that comes through you, how are you qualifying your thoughts, your emotions, what you say, what you do, what you create, when you become hyper aware of qualifying what you're doing, and you just pause, right, it's moment by moment at first, and then there's a flow that that uh, takes over, really takes over. But qualifying your life force energy and being aware, where am I in alignment? Where am I out of alignment? Oh, I didn't mean to create that. Okay, Let's pull it back into the heart. Let's start over, right? Because you can always uncreate and recreate. You know, it's consistent. There's a flow. And if you can deal with it without judgment as, oh, that thing I did was wrong, or, oh, I didn't mean to say that, pull it back to the heart and express it in a different way, that's when you start to retrain the neural pathways and the emotions and everything, because the, especially with the nervous system, because the nervous system is responsible for receiving and pulsing light through the body. So that, that's why a lot of people are feeling anxious or on edge right now is because there's such a high level of light coming in that's literally shaking by quantum effect, shaking the lower realities until they dissolve or get absorbed into the higher frequency, pure quantum physics. But that's what's happening right now. So when people are like, I just feel shaky and anxious and everything, it's because it's it's shaking apart what you have created before. So there's this kind of request from source to create something new, like source. So it has such a strong intention. And because of all the beings that have built this planetary realm, right, these realms for us to have this experience of ascension, of a next level of Christ consciousness, of crystalline beingness, because there's so much intention there and and such a lineage, it's, it's amplified, right? The light comes along and all of a sudden, all of these gateways start opening, including the gateway in the heart. So when you start feeling those light flows kind of triggering the nervous system, that's another practice everyone um, can participate in now. Do your yoga. Do, you know, the things that calm the nervous system and making sure you get rid of the things that trigger the nervous system, you know, in healthy ways, don't reject it, but slowly and surely just taking those things away that create um, too much negative energy 
or too much chaos in the fields. And you slowly migrate your realities to this calm, centered, infinite Christed state that knows it's having an experience, but it also desires to create something new. And that for me is the, the juicy spot right now. I'm like, ooh, I can feel it. Like to be aware of it is amazing. You know, that's beautiful. To be aware of feel and, and feel it, feel your consciousness changing and becoming more of your higher self, your multidimensional self is just so juicy and delicious and wonderful and, and profound. You know, I can't emphasize that enough, how profound it is. So for anyone who just wants to start um, this journey, you know, it all starts with choice and then moment by moment, show me, show me what my highest trajectory is. What do I do in this moment? What do I need to pay attention to? And then not just listen for the signs, but take action when you receive them, right? That's the biggest thing. Take action. Oh, there's that thing again, right? There's that message again. There's that reminder again. Oh yeah. Because there's all these little, you know, the spirit is constantly trying to awaken more, right? It wants to get in. It wants to take over the journey. We'll be back in just a moment. But first, we want to share a little bit about the sponsors who support this episode. This sponsor is an OG partner and for good reason, Athletic Greens. I'm sure you've seen them or heard them talked about just about everywhere. And y'all, if you haven't gone on the Athletic Greens train, now is the time. This is your sign. So AG1 by Athletic Greens. This is a category leading superfood product that brings comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition to everybody. So it's one scoop a day. I mix it in cold water and y'all, I am filling my nutritional gap. So if it's hard for you to take a bunch of pills and capsules to just, you know, get your daily supplementation, consider AG1. It has 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, including a multivitamin, multimineral, probiotic, green superfood blend, and more. And again, this is one convenient daily serving. So if you or anyone in your life is like, I I can't just take all these things, you just have to take one in this case. It's a blend of high quality bioavailable ingredients. They are obsessed with where they are sourcing, how they are sourcing. And this is going to really, really support your energy, your digestion, your immune system, your focus and more. So I'm excited for you to try and I'm very excited because you are going to get a full year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. If you visit athleticgreens.com slash almost 30 today today. Okay. Athleticgreens.com slash almost 30. You're going to get a year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs, which I take with me everywhere with your first purchase. Enjoy. I'm packing for a trip and I was organizing all of my home nutrition supplements that I am taking with me. And I wanted to share what they were on this trip. I'm taking Daily Cleanse. This is a unique formula of detoxifying herbs and minerals that help reduce breakouts and improve skin clarity. I take this just about every day and I've noticed a difference in the clarity of my skin. None of those like tiny little breakouts, you know, that just kind of pop up when I know I've like eaten a little off or something like that. So this takes care of it. I'm also bringing red carpet. This is like one of my OG supplements from HUM that I've always taken. This is the perfect balance of GLA, ALA, and vitamin E that hydrates from the inside out to combat dry, dull skin and hair. I'm also bringing the Calm Sweet Calm. This is a really delicious vegan sour cherry gummy and it has ashwagandha, L-theanine, and it's really proven to reduce stress symptoms and lower levels of the stress hormone cortisol. I love home nutrition. I love them because they are obsessed with testing their products. They are clean, clinically proven, triple tested for purity. Uh, They have beauty benefits, energy benefits, digestive benefits, and more. So go to their 
site, humnutrition.com. Take a quiz. It takes a few minutes and you will get a recommendation from a certified nutritionist. They also offer support on there. And for our listeners, you're going to get 20% off your first order of $29 or more with code ALMOST30. So go to humnutrition.com, H-U-M nutrition.com. Use the code ALMOST30 for 20% off your first order of $29 or more. I can't help but think about just the the time that we, the 3D time that we are finding ourselves in now, which is full of judgment and fear and nervous system activation. And mm. I, I'm curious what you've felt and the messages that you've received. Um, and the clarity that you've had through this time um, about about the the intensity of the judgment, like the word judgment just keeps kind of pulsing in, in my mind's eye. It's like it is so intense, obvious, in our face all the time over the last couple years, and it is so activating to the nervous system. I can pinpoint mm-hmm. moments over the last couple of years where I'm like, whoa, either it's the self-judgment, judgment from others towards self or just judgment of what's happening. And so is this, is this time to kind of recalibrate to find that divine neutrality? Is this like very centered around that? Are, what mm-hmm. are the messages that you've, you've heard specifically? Yeah, it's interesting that divine neutrality, which is something I received back in 2011. So it's been a while. And all of a sudden, it was boom, huge in the field, right? And I distinctly remember late second half of 2019. All, you know, over and over again, it's all going to come to a full stop, full stop, global, full stop, global. I'm like, what does this mean, right? And then we get to the end of 2019 and I'm doing a, a webinar and I'm like, this is, uh, you know, almost apologizing. It's all going to come to a full stop. I don't know how that's going to present, but it's consistent. It's been consistent for the, you know, for months. And the key to walking through this with as much ease and grace as possible is to revisit divine neutrality because you're going to see everything just explode, right? Global shutdown. All of a sudden, you know, literally weeks after that global shutdown, I'm like, well, okay, there it is. Full stop, right? For everybody to just stop, stop what you were doing. It was like you, it's like you ran out of time for one reality and the next one was like ready to go. And I don't judge the folks who, created that or or tried to or trying to turn it into something else i don't judge them at all which is freedom right freedom of the heart is to step back and go i don't want to make this situation worse i don't want to fight for one side or the other because that's an energy that is no longer in my field fight for this you know and i'm somebody who's been the, the center of unity meditations for six years, every Sunday, global unity meditations. And I'm so grateful that that presented, they were like, there's going to come a time when you're not going to be able to get together. Oh, I was like, okay. So we started doing these unity meditations so that we could see and feel and hear each other telepathically and get into that, how you feel the field without wires without social media, you know, without all of that. And thank goodness we did that because now it's it's ingrained, right? It gets entrained into your fields, how to feel into the unity consciousness and let the external have its experience, right? But perhaps you want to opt out of judging things as wrong. Like I don't, I don't feel, I don't believe in tearing somebody else down or throwing shade on somebody else um, in order to make my myself brighter. That doesn't work at all. It is not a proper use of life force. So there's a lot of that that you just step away. All right, we're just going to let that person have their journey, but 
now you're not part of my journey anymore. Sometimes, you know, it's just, all right, we're just going to let that dissolve. And sometimes it's with ease and grace. Sometimes maybe the other person or the situation still wants your energy, still wants you to be involved. And you can, you know, graciously say, you know what, I'm just up for another experience. Maybe we'll cross paths again. It's really easy. It's actually very easy. It's just there's there's a lot of baggage sometimes of I don't want to say anything or and sometimes you don't have to at all. You know, I'm somebody who deals with, you know, the hundreds of thousands of people. So there's going to be a lot of emails and you just let it go. Let it go. Blessings, let it go. Dissolve. Because the second you decide to engage with a duality or a conflict or whatever, then you're entangled. Right. So a lot of it. You have to get neutral and make the choice. Is my getting involved or saying something going to improve the situation (laughs) or not? You know, or do I really have all of the information to make a wise choice in this now about who I want to support or what's real, what's not real, what's not in the highest interest of all concerned, what is in the highest interest of all concerned? So the neutrality is not just opting out, it's giving you perspective, taking a moment. Mm, All right, where would I like to direct my energy as a Christed being if that is my pursuit, right? Because the Christed state, if you cross paths with any of the masters in the astral or beyond, they don't carry anything, right? I always say care, but don't carry. It's you can care, but you don't have to carry everybody's issues or the trajectory of lower agendas or anything like that, right? And it, it may seem like, um, like you're backing away from things and maybe you need to do that. You know, maybe some people need to just step away, just turn off the Instagram, it's okay. You're getting triggered, Shh. You know, you need to go outside and start to learn more about how this crystalline heart operates. And that way you can observe and witness the external and all the conflicts and everything and direct your energy toward which creates a the outcome that you desire right so if you are all about tearing down the old blessings to you you know ha- have at it if you're all about creating the new and expanding into a different experience you put all of your focus there and especially during these times that really want to pull your attention. Like I feel like recently there's been a lot of messages about people who have been able to maintain their heart clearly and can maintain grace and compassion that you're going to be busy in the next year because there's going to be people who are very confused about choices or narratives that they were following that then flip on them. So you can be that neutral party, never a... I told you so. Never a, wow, you really got it wrong. You know, that's where that Christed neutrality really comes in. How, you know, if they ask for assistance, that's another thing. You don't want to just kind of throw your advice everywhere. That's not being, you know, in the unconditional love state. No, you, you offer on your platforms what you have to teach and to serve but you're not going to go out and try to, you know, force it on people. That's a completely different agenda altogether, trying to get people to do what you want them to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And you want nothing to do with that. If you're going to move into different states of higher consciousness. So I feel that's where we need to be right now. Right. Just kind of like witness, observe, where do I want to qualify my light, send my light out, participate. You know, I'm all about participating in more peace, more grace, you know, that's my, that's my choice. And as, as someone who has received a whole lot of material on it is the divine human genome and the crystalline light body, that expression in the, in the new earth, which is emerging right now, that expression is completely capable of living without shadow. Now that is like throwing a big love bomb at the new age, right? Because the new age, which is kind of old age now, the the new age belief system was applicable to that 
point in our journey. But now new things are opening up and they're like, oh, congratulations, you know, you're here in the journey. There's enough of you, you know, millions of us uh, unifying and kind of coming into this self-revelation, self-realization um, that's so beautiful because it's just sources looking for outlets for it to flow into these realms. And when you open up to that, it's a completely different experience. You know, so again, just showing humanity what's possible with ascension, right? And you can live your daily life. You don't have to avoid what's going on, but you it's more um, about seeking understanding than judging what is right and what is wrong or laughing at the demise of, you know, lower structures or getting really triggered about who's saying what it just, it, it just doesn't matter. You know, you can honor that. Well, that's interesting. Oh, that's an interesting thing, you know, but, uh, but making the choice of what would you like to experience? And for some people, you know, they are that experience. They are having that experience and they want that experience and they get addicted to that experience of, you know, get, give me more of that low level stimulation of the fight and the battle and everything. And um, for, for people who have had, you know, have the kind of the galactic perspective, oh my goodness, that's been going on for so long. You're just looking at it as like, oh yeah, that's the point in the journey where this happens, that happens, that happens, that happens, you know, and it all works out well. So when you can feel that higher trajectory, you trust, you trust the process a little bit more. Like, oh, and you can feel that. And for those of us who are conduits, you know, I, I actually um, don't use the term channel because it just kind of throws people into, <laughs> like, it puts me in a box, right? So as a conduit of you, of your your higher levels, you start having like a, a much clearer perspective on the whole journey and appreciating it. There's so much gratitude for the journey, for the experience, like, wow, look, it's so beautiful. Look at everyone is so confused right now. This is like that point in the journey when everyone was going to be confused. Uh, wonderful, right? Oh, and then the next thing, oh, this is good. Everyone's getting confused. Everything's coming apart. This is wonderful because the next thing is so much, you know, is more expansion and more light and, and just, uh, not just preparing yourself for like a future moment, but really being in the present as that presence, it just changes everything. And I feel it's a really good heart-based place to deal with what's happening in the external right now. That was so good. Um, you've mentioned a few times and I would be remiss not to ask about the galactic you know, the galactic guides and allies and teams that have been supporting us. Um, our audience is, we are alien curious <laughs> and we love to learn about the galactic star family that we have. Can you tell us a little, a little bit about some of the guides from that are supporting earth in the ascension process? Yeah, well, there's multitudes of uh, different expressions of consciousness um, that are assisting with this at multiple levels of uh, densities and dimensions however when if you just focus in on star family that's just our, our immediate galactic neighborhood um, a lot of us either carry that energy or are actually have expressions in those different star systems that have had experiences in different star systems and wanted to come and play in these realms during um the ascension highlights, right? <laughs> during during the highlight reel. So here, here we are. Uh, a lot of those, um, what we would call root races, Lyrans, right? Lion beings. That was uh, some of my first contact. And they they present, even before my third eye was, was open, they would present so strongly. I mean, if you've ever seen um, a, a lion being just so like, regal and strong and they do look like felines right they do look like lions so um just a very strong presence and then i didn't learn until 
later that that's actually part of my original uh, essence, had experiences in that star system. Uh, so I still carry a lot of that energy and a lot of um, a lot of my team, you know, I call them my divine entourage, my, my team, there's quite a few Lyrans there and they're actually the ones that taught me about stargates. So that was my, my first interaction training with um, how to open stargates and interact that way was all with these beautiful feline beings. And, uh, and they're still with me very strongly, but they're part of like um, a, a root race that contributed to this uh, divine human genome. So you get Lyran beings, you get avians, and you get uh, cetaceans, dolphin, whale types that like carry the, um, the living library and, and all of that information. And they, they all have different expressions, but through these eons of this creation, there's been a lot of different races that came in and maybe contributed. Uh, aspects or things to make it easier. So no judgment or higher choice on, on any of them. Um, and uh, I might want to remind everyone not to judge one race over, over another, no more than you would judge one human over another, because, you know, if you're judging a race at all, congratulations, you're a racist, but <laughs> it's, uh, you don't want to paint one race with the, with the same brush, right? You want to make sure um, you're, you're dealing with individual expressions of consciousness in multiple realms. But I find like the galactic thing that's going on right now to be very interesting. It is a phase of our ascension to have this kind of galactic inter interaction. For me, it's a very, fl um, a very clear light signature when they are present or when they have messages, let's say it's more teamwork now than receive a message and deliver it. That's that part of my journey is kind of dissolving because it's more, the more you get into unity consciousness, the more you realize, oh, this is just my awareness now is integrating and say like Arcturians that are working at like, you know, much higher density, higher dimensional level, um, they're already in unity consciousness. So for them to individuate and present to you as an individual Arcturian being uh, takes a lot of energy, <laughs> you know, because they're not expressing that anymore. So it's, you know, it's for our benefit. And sometimes you're talking to yourself you know, another expression of self that is existing without time. And they're just showing up, giving you some guidance. So when you're asking for your guides, it's not like, you know, visitors from the Pleiades or whatever. It's not like that. You, you might actually be interacting with different aspects of the self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why in Love One, they call it social memory complex. So it's like they don't individuate. Mm -hmm. At one point, you almost are so close to source that you unify, you know, you become one social memory complex instead of like an individualized being. Precisely. And that's what humanity is on the trajectory for. Mm -hmm. You go through this Aquarian honoring of unique expression and value of the individual creation. Mm -hmm. And because you get into that honoring of all journeys and honor honoring of all expressions of source and having the highest interests of all concerned can, you know, learning unity. What is it like knowing that my, especially as a, you know, a higher vibrational presence, you have a larger effect on the collective. So you have to really own your journey and whatever you do, because you know, it's going to affect the collective whole, right? The more you level up, the higher your vibration, the more effect you have on the, on the collective Re rising into that unity consciousness. So the path of learning and honoring and then acting in the highest interest of all concerned is training for pure unity consciousness where you don't need the planet. You don't need the light ship. And you don't need to individuate at all. So it's beautiful. And sometimes it kind of feels like remembering interaction, right? Like Krishna, you know, showing up in the woods, and I'm seven, you know, and then 
later, you know, down the line, Babaji, like, oh, this is where you are, you know, in this different level of consciousness altogether, you know, just like different revelations. And there, there was a very strong period, 2014 through 2016, where a lot of people that were on the ascension path were starting to get that Godhead experience really strong, like formless realm, infinite light consciousness. And we were spending hours there a day all at the same time. So if there's any, if, you, if there's any, um, you know, kind of backup for, for unity consciousness stepping into the field, we start to have experiences at the same time. And you did, you got it. And again, it, it imprinted and it fed that awareness back into the field, back into that crystalline field of that unified divine human ascension uh, that we're going through. And that experience, again, incredibly profound, but to be able to experience it, not just uh, one God drop at a time, it was hours and expansive. And you saw like cr creator beings like using that light to create different things, but it wasn't like, creating you know a clay planet you know it was just infinite realms of light and creation just really beautiful and it was lovely to experience that because like anything you know you can pull any of your experiences into the now right just collapse into zero point have that experience again explore it revisit it it's never just one moment and i, I just want to note for people who have had like one really great contact experience or one really great sighting or whatever and are wondering how come it never happened again how do i get back there i had this big expansion through the heart and i saw god and it was you know just amazing how do i get back there it's like okay honey for for some people that might be the one little thing you needed to move your journey forward but to own it and be and become a responsible creator is how you get more of that. Mm -hmm. So when you're dedicating yourself, like I, I, I wouldn't be in this position if I had decided, oh, I'm just going to pursue it at whatever I'm doing in Chicago and just uh, be an artist and that's it, right? I never would have had all the ex experiences because your consciousness made a choice. Right. So when your consciousness is consistently kind of pushing the edges of your reality and going, what else is out there and creating space for those experiences, that's when you get more. But when it comes to galactic, sometimes it's a one hit wonder, right? It's just that one visit and that's all you needed just to open the door. Hey, there's something else out here. That's you or hey, this other realm exists. And for some people, that's all they that's all they need. You know, that's all you needed for your journey. Now carry on. But don't, you know, I saw a lot of people in Shasta who were waiting for the next visit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sisters, decades, right? Waiting for decades for that ship to come back or that being to come back. Mm -hmm. Just my heart opens to them because I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, that's your journey. But to to see someone um just waiting yeah. right i'm i'm not much of a waiter i don't wait for experiences to happen i know that you have to be involved right especially pure benevolent experiences you have to be involved right i love that yeah and i think that just that particular example speaks to um yeah just like this this very deep knowing and then human yearning for that connection. And I think we're at that tipping point or it feels like we're at that tipping point where there will be more of the knowing and the actual living of um, the truth that that opening is for you to remember that it has always mm -hmm. been there. Um, so yeah, my, my heart definitely opens to them as well because, um, yeah, to be, to bring it into like even more everyday context, it's kind of like that hit of being on social media, feeling love fr from a hundred people and you're like, oh, I need that again. And, 
And it's always right. calling us deeper inside rather than out here to affirm or confirm what we precisely, already know. Sister. Yeah, precisely. And that I feel you made a, a strong point there, that desire to have something external come into your world to show you something, right? It's um, uh, for, for some people, maybe they, they needed to be shown that in order to start the journey of the internal mm -hmm. work, if you want to call it that, or the internal revelation, because this, you know, the heart center is the, is source itself. So there's no, there's guidance and there can be information, but it's all kind of pointing us to the same place. Learn that source is within, that you are that. And so is every other fractal of consciousness on the planet. So for some, yeah, it might be a lesson in, wow, I spent my entire incarnation waiting for that ship to come back, you know, or whatever. And it's like, oh, because you didn't turn it into, you know, okay, but you know, we all, you get as many shots as you like. So come back next time and make it a really beautiful, deep internal journey of getting to know Gaia, getting to know people, getting to, you know, um, because there might be fear of other people too. Like a lot of people are, uh, well, some, some um, even starseeds, if you want to call them that, um, more comfortable with galactics than they are humans. And I don't feel that's the lesson here. Uh, but, you know, everybody has their journey. But if you choose, if you're choosing ascension, there's definitely the inner self-revelation that causes higher experiences. If there's any cause, there's a cause there within the heart center that causes a different experience, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Yeah, this, this has been, been so wonderful and powerful and needed. And I'm just so grateful for your time and your work and your energy and just spending it with us today has been such a delight. I've been really looking forward to this and I know our audience is just going to absolutely love it. <laughs> I cannot wait to share. So Truly. I appreciate mm -hmm. it so much. I'd love if there's anything coming up for you that you'd love to share, you know, with our audience, we'd love for you to, um, you know, promote it now. Promotion. Goodness. Uh, <laughs> I am very active. So I actually run an entire online university for Ascension. It's called ascensionpath.com. We do have an annual event coming up in Sedona. That is a mastery level event. So if you feel you're there and you actually want to be in the room with 200 people that are fully activating the field, <laughs> it's kind of an intense experience. But, you know, if you're ready, you're ready. Um, it really kind of blows the doors off on all, all kinds of lower consciousness. You just fully are immersed in, in the field of unity and divine love in a, in a much, um, a much higher frequency as well. What is that um, happening? That's happening in May in Sedona, May 14th and 15th in Sedona. And there's a live stream. So if you don't feel like you're ready for the room, just watch the live stream. You know, it's a whole weekend. It's beautiful. It's very unique. So read the description. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a friend, my friend Lauren Daly, when because I saw her with you in Sedona or at that event, and she was said it was unreal. She's like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even have words. So, yeah, that sounds so thing. exciting. Yeah, and your courses and programs are incredible. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that wants more information about what we're talking about. You can get those um, on the ascensionpath.com. And then your Instagram is one of my favorite places to be. The decrees are um, just graphics that you can really read and do in the morning, do whenever. But I, I have myself and my husband do them, and I really feel them. They're so good. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, it's been just an honor to share space with you both this day. Thank you, sisters, for everything that you're doing. Thank you so much, Sandra. We really appreciated your time. That was really, truly a treat for us. And we're excited for our Almost 30 Nation community to connect with you. And thank you to our sponsors for this episode. You can find all discount information in our show notes or on our website, almost30.com slash partners. Thanks for listening. We will see you on the next one. We love you. Bye. <laughs>